Good morning, fellow programmers. Thanks for joining me. I'm T Pain, and welcome to Let's Learn C. Feel free to use the skip ahead feature on the right hand side to jump to any specific sections or examples. Make sure to have annotations turned on so you can see the updates I make to these videos. I'll be using Visual Studio Community Edition, which you can download from visualstudio.com, or you can follow along with whatever IDE or program you like. Today's focus will be on Functions Part 2, Headers, Namespace, and Macros, which builds heavily on previous lessons. So check those out if you're unfamiliar with a topic. If this is your first programming language, I'd strongly recommend checking out the Let's Learn Python series, which teaches you the fundamentals of programming. All you need are the Basics and Object-Oriented Programming series, link to the right, and you'll be well prepared for this C++ series. All right, I want to do a quick update on the previous tutorial I created. We showed that arrays can be passed in by pointers. Arrays can also be passed into a function by using the square brackets in the parameters. So we could type void add one, open parentheses, int, array, and then right there, after we say variable name of r, pass in square brackets to indicate that it is an array instead of a pointer. Both work fine. This is just clearer to the user that they're going to be passing in an array. The other thing I wanted to mention is for function parameters. When a copy is made of arguments, we're passing in by a value. When we pass in a pointer or reference into a function, we are passing by reference. Okay, now on to the main lesson. Based on what we know right now, our functions must come before the main function. Otherwise, the program won't compile. It does not have to be this way, however. Instead, we can use function declarations or function prototypes and define our functions elsewhere. So the declarations are the interface and the definitions are the implementations. I'll repeat that. So the declarations are the interfaces and the definitions are the implementations. All right, so here's a very slim example of this in action. First, we have our function prototype or our function declaration saying, hey, we're going to define this somewhere else in the program. Then we have our function call in the main function. This prototype lets us know, hey, we're going to actually define this somewhere else. And then we just define it down below the main program and everything compiles just fine. So if we run it, it will indeed just print ham like that. Da 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 da. And it's good. Cool. All right. So this leads into our main topic of headers. Headers are text presets for your font to be slightly larger than other font used on a web page. Headers is also a slang term for flipping a coin. You can call headers or tailsers when flipping the coin. <laughs> That's a terrible joke. Okay. Header files are where we can lump many different function declarations together in a single file. We will later be putting classes into them as well. Winky face. <laughs> we can then define each of these functions in a separate CPP file. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and clear out this code and then paste in even more. And we're also going to open up our solution explorer as that's gonna be important for showing everything that we're doing. First, I'm gonna paste in our main function and main file. Notice the first thing we have here is we have an include and then in double quotes, we have print underscore ham dot h. And then we have a call to that function. Cool. Now we actually have to create the header file and the CPP file. So the way that we'll do that is right here under source files, we'll go ahead and add a new item. Okay. And it's going to be a CPP item. And we're going to call this print underscore capital H for ham dot CPP. Okay. Let's paste it in there. And now we're going to paste in some code. Note the include IO stream just so we can actually output ham. And then we're also for this file importing the header file we're going to be creating as well. And then it's just a simple print ham function right here, just as we've been defining over and over throughout these lectures. Now we're going to go ahead and create a header file. So we're going to right click on header file, click add new item, and we're going to create a header file called lowercase print and then uppercase H for ham and then dot H and then click enter. Now notice that it gives us this little bit of code that says pragma once. We're never going to use pragma because it's not a standard way of creating a header guard. Instead, we're going to do something entirely different. And I'll show you what that is right now. So here is our header file. It begins with hashtag if and def, and then it has in all caps print underscore ham underscore h. And this is the beginning of our header guard. Then after that, we have define print underscore ham underscore h. And this is the definition of our macro. And then at the very end of the file, we have end if. 
Now this is part of header guards, macros, and we're gonna get into both of those in just a minute. But for now, know this is how you create a header file. And this is a very standard way of creating a header file. Cool. So let's go through and save all of our files and go ahead and try to run it. Cool, it compiled just fine. I'm gonna set a breakpoint right here so that we can actually see it when it's finished. And it does indeed work. It prints out ham just fine. We continue to reiterate what we did. We created this header file that just has a function prototype called print ham. And that prototype allowed us to use that print ham function in our main file and define it in a different file altogether in our print ham CPP file. Very cool. And all that was done by just using the include print ham dot h header in both of these files. Perfect. When we previously tried to do importing in Python, we just imported the name of the file. And C++ is slightly harder in that the project must be connected to the file. So notice that we are in a project called main lesson right here. And this is main lessons files right here. There are two other files right here called test.cpp and test.h. However, they are not included in the project and therefore do not actually work. If I drag these into our Visual Studio Editor, it will allow us to actually edit them if we so desire. But if we try to call this function p in our main function, it won't actually work. p, open, close parentheses, and end it. Even if we type include test.h, it still will not work. Watch what happens. Instead, it's gonna give us an error pop-up saying that there's build errors. This is because the definition of P was not actually included. So what's going on? Well, the project knows that it can find this he header file, but it cannot find the CPP file. It doesn't know where the function's actual definition is. And the way we do that is we can connect both of these files to our project so we can see it in our solutions explorer by two different ways. The first way is to drag and drop your files right onto the source files for uh, anything that's CPP related, and there it is. Or we can also right click on it, click add, and then add existing item right here. And then we can navigate to our file of test.h and add that, and it's good. And now both of these files have been connected properly to the project. And notice there is no error on the P underscore. And if we try to compile, it works just fine. Perfect. What was actually in this files is nothing. It's just a uh, empty function altogether. It doesn't do anything. It was to show you that you can actually have files in your project folder that don't get compiled or included in your project unless they're connected up through Visual Studio's project or whatever program you're using. To remove those, you can always right click and click remove right here or press the delete key. And then it'll ask you if you want to remove the, the file from your project or actually delete the file off of the disk altogether. We'll just go ahead and remove it for both of these to make our program small again. Whenever we use hash include, we are telling the program to use a header file. Even IOStream, which we've used in just about every program we've created, is a header file. We use Angular braces to enclose pre-supplied files or libraries, and we use double quotes for our own custom files. So that's those right here, and double quotes enclosing our custom files. Perfect. So we can actually delete that code right there too. <laughs> it is possible to include full directory paths, but it is easier to just include additional directories as I showed you in tutorial number eight, where we go ahead and go under here and then include our additional directories under the property pages of our project right here. When you're creating a .h file or a header file, you will very likely need an accompanying CPP file which you def in which you define the functions. Note that they do not have to have the same name, but I would recommend doing so for Clarity. Clarity is a very nice girl and deserves to be treated well. Are you enjoying these jokes yet? <laughs> All right, so let's jump over to our header file here and talk about header guards. They tell the compiler to only compile the source file once. The one that we saw when the header file was initially created called pragma once is actually a very non-standard way of setting up header guards. Instead, we would recommend always doing the if and def define and end if format. If you do not include header guards, your program may not compile correctly or will include unnecessary files. And this if and def means if not defined, then define this macro, set up all your functions and end if. The C++ core guidelines have this to say. SF.2 says, header files may not include object or class definitions or non-inline function definitions. 
So in other words, keep header files just to a minimum. SF4 says include header files before the declaration of a file. In other words, always have your includes at the top of your file before anything else happens in your file, <laughs> which we know from Python with our imports and whatnot. Include stuff at the very beginning of each file. SF7 says don't put using directives in a header file. Agreed. You don't want to ever go using namespace standard or something like that in a header file. It's unnecessary. You're not actually going to be creating any function definitions here, so it's better to just Instead, use your scope if you have to, like standard, colon, colon, or whatever, because you're not having to do very much here. SFA says, include guards for all header files, aka header guards. The core guidelines say do it, so do it! All right, so how do all these files interact? How do they work together? When your program builds, the main.cpp file and the header files are compiled to create a main.o file. Other CPP files are compiled individually to into .o files, and those are linked together with libraries to create your main exe. All right, so when we created our header guard, we were actually creating a macro right here. Macros are constants that can be accessed elsewhere. So if we wanted to, we could create our, some of our own custom macros by typing define capital PI and then 3.14159265, etc. And this is now a constant that we can use elsewhere in our program by calling that name just like an ordinary variable. We could create other f custom f macros like prog version for our program version so that we can iterate on it if we so desire. Or we could create a custom one called ham and set it equal to five. Or even ham if we wanted to, because I can spell. There we go. Doesn't really matter, but you can use these. I would not, however, recommend creating constants this way unless it's something like pi or some mathematical number you need but chances are there's some library somewhere that has it if you do need to create constants instead consider creating enumerators which we will cover in our class tutorials just a few videos from now in fact the guidelines actually say this enum.1 says prefer enumerators over macros it's their number one thing the very first thing they said about enumerators was to preserve them over macros es.32 says use all caps for all macro names this is the one case where we're always going to be using caps this is what caps are reserved for this instance for macros is a perfect example of why I prefer underscore spacing versus camel casing. Because for macros, you can't have camel casing. Everything's got to be all capitalized. So this would just be print them <laughs> if we didn't have underscores in between. Instead, those underscores actually make it a lot easier to read rather than print them. <laughs> all right, so namespaces now. If two different header files create functions of the same name, the result is a naming collision that the compiler will flag with a compiler error. Namespaces is how we solve this problem. Namespace provides a scope to the identifiers. This could be variables, functions, or classes you create. Every time we use std colon colon or standard in front of our cn or cout, we were declaring which namespace or scope the function is found in. When we don't need to declare a namespace, we are using the global namespace. To create a namespace, you just use the keyword namespace in it and enclose all your code within the curly braces. So let's go ahead and put this into our print ham header file right here. And we're just going to call this namespace space and then the name of our namespace, which is going to be ham, open curly braces and then close curly braces around our function right here. Okay, cool. Now what we need to do in order to get this working in our main and CPP files is we just need to add that scope of ham right before our function name. So we just type ham colon colon and then print ham. Just as before, go into our main function, add that same thing, ham colon colon, and now our functions are scoped properly. Perfect. So if we go ahead and run this, it'll print out ham just as before. Ta-da! And that is as simple as it gets for creating your own custom namespaces right here. Cool. You can't talk about namespaces without talking about the keyword using. We've been using using, <laughs> see what I did there? We've been using using for the namespace STD or standard to reduce the amount of typing we do. I would recommend careful use of this keyword though, because using it too much can result in naming conflicts in your program and defeat the whole point of the namespace altogether. On the other hand, you can also nest namespace to make your life extra hard. Or you can also create a namespace alias 
for multiple at once. So if we wanted to, we could create a namespace within this namespace. We're gonna go, go ahead and type namespace sandwich with open curly braces and then cr close curly braces down here. Perfect. And now we need to add this namespace of sandwich somewhere else. So if I go in here, I would have to actually add in namespace ham, the namespace sandwich separated by colons right here. And then our print ham function will work just fine. Now, if we go under here, I want to do something slightly different. Instead, I want to combine multiple aliases at once. So I'm going to go namespace. We're going to call this food is equal to ham colon colon sandwich. Perfect. And then end it there. And so this allows us to create a namespace alias. So it's a way of shortening up our like combination of many different namespaces and it'll work just fine. And now notice the compiler error right under our print ham is gone away. Beautiful. So we can create tons of different namespaces and we can shorten them back up again by creating an alias namespace. Awesome. And if we go ahead and run the program again, it works just fine. Beautiful. How cool is that? That's pretty cool, man. Finally, the guidelines say in SF20, use namespaces to express logical structure. All right, that is it. Thank you so much for watching. Great job keeping up. Definitely try these coding challenges shown here and the debug challenges linked below in the description. Please leave me a comment below if this helped you at all, and also check out the comments if you're having problems. Please share this tutorial series with someone special, and maybe support me on Patreon. Thank you guys so much for your support, and as always, like, subscribe, keep the dream alive.